Welcome to our Blue Christmas. This is a worship service that is a break from whatever people call the Christmas spirit. Here you do not need to pretend to be cheery. You do not need to deny the struggles and challenging places in your lives. This year has been truly a struggle for all of us, but for some more than others. So that's why I chose to put on uh, to worship with a blue Christmas and to offer it for all who are struggling. Here the Christmas spirit is knowing how deeply God loves you. You're not alone. We all are struggling and God loves you and it's always with you. So come feel at ease, know that you are loved and may you hopefully find some company and light. Welcome to this safe place where warmth and community surround you. We are broken, hurt, alone and sad. We gather in our longing. The light of the world is coming. It is here. We have a hard time seeing. Come, let us look for the light together. Let us find comfort in a God who knows the pain and anguish of being human. Come, find company and love. Let us gather and feel some peace. Let us pray. Dear God, help us to find respite from our struggles. Help us find home. We are lost, sad, and lonely. In this time, may your comfort envelop us like a bear hug or a warm blanket when we are cold. May we be revived to head through tomorrow with more ease. Be with us in our time of need. Amen. A prayer of compassion, of confession. A prayer of confession. Holy God, we do not feel the Christmas spirit of light, joy, and happiness. Others are ready for presents and special jammies and giggles, and we sit in the darkness alone. Things have fallen apart. We miss people dearly. We are not buoyant and sparkly. Come, find us. Come, help us. Come, enfold us in your steadfast love and care. Amen. God loves you more than you can imagine. God does. Even when you can't feel it, your heartbeat reminds you that you sing the song of the cosmos without trying. Jesus is always reaching out to you with understanding and compassion. You are forgiven, loved, and held close. We believe that Jesus is fully human and fully divine. It is a confusing non-decision, but it is meaningful. We lean into the fully human nature of Jesus. Although set apart, Jesus still knew the struggles of being human. Jesus knew what it was like to be angry, alone, hurt, and so very tired that the will to go on seemed impossible. Let us listen to some scripture passages that reveal the humanity of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. In Matthew 21, 12 to 17, Jesus rejects abuses perpetrated in the name of religion, then gets in trouble for healing the sick. So let us listen. Jesus cleanses the temple. Then Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he cured them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things that he did and heard the children crying out in the temple, 
Hosanna to the son of David. They became angry, and they said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you never read out of the mouth of infants and nursing babies? You have prepared praise for yourself. Jesus left them, went out of the city to Bethany, and spent the night there. The word of the Lord. We're going to look at Matthew 26, 36 to 46, where Jesus is alone, unsure, and scared. Even his closest friends are not there for him. Jesus prays in Gethsemane. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for a third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayal is at hand. The word of the Lord. And we will look at John eleven seventeen to 36. Jesus gathers with friends to mourn the death of one he loved deeply. Jesus, the resurrection and the life. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Then Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. But Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said, Yes, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Jesus weeps. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, 
saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? And they said to Jesus, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. See how he loved him. It's amazing that Jesus lived a full human life with all the ups and downs and frailties of being just like us. As we can tell by the stories, he had many moments of hurt, of tiredness, and of anxiety. He can help you as you walk through those times also. A statement of faith. We believe that God loves us without end. We believe that God sent Jesus to live with us as a human. In his time on earth, Jesus experienced the joys and pains of being one of us. Jesus loved and lost, laughed and cried felt overwhelming joy and unbearable pain. Jesus' life of love, healing, and courage ended with abandonment and great anguish. He knew what it was to be one of us. God understands our pain. We celebrate that we are not alone. God is always with us in deeply compassionate company supporting us, loving us, and helping us move forward into the hopes and dreams that God has planned for us. I offer you this blessing. Know that your struggle is honored. You are loved deeply right now wherever you are. As you go through the next few days and weeks, may you feel okay about how you are. May the light of the coming Christ child give you hope and see you through. May the love of God surround you. May the Holy Spirit hold you, lift you, and help you. Amen.